So I'm headed down this old mining road that is no longer a road. It's become a trail. And this takes us to the uh, portal of the tunnel that I'm going to explore today. Check out that pine tree. That is huge. But we'll continue this way and check it out. So the trail continues that way and it kind of starts going uphill. Uh, this part of the trail in the wintertime is really dangerous. I think some people have actually slipped and fallen here when this gets real icy and it's pretty steep. That goes all the way down there and this is looking across the ravine. And that's looking up the ravine. Um, yes, yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty steep territory. So, yeah, the uh, trail here um, is just basically on a rock pile. Very easy to slip and fall, especially in the wintertime, like I was saying. It'd be too cold to come up here in the wintertime, be too much snow, but the hike's open year-round, so people do. I can see right here where it gets, goes down here in front of me. Down that way and over there. Another shot looking back. So here along the trail, you're starting to see some of the uh, rock bolts with some chain link fence. And the entrance to the tunnel is right got some water coming out of it right here that just flows down into the canyon but the entrance is right here got some old chains still hanging up here and a, what looks like an old lock and that's the tunnel so here's the portal to the uh, this is called the Fenner Tunnel, and uh, along the way I picked up a couple of hikers who are going to come in here with me. Hey. hey. <laughs> so, let's go check this out. Yeah, I'm not sure how much water's in here. I know it's uh, probably up to ankles, but I'm not sure. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> how did you get in, Mike? Mm -hmm. Why? Well, she went frontwards. Myself. Oh, okay. Hold yourself. Then put your feet on the rock and So I think up ahead you can see the partial collapse, about a, 200 feet up there, or something like that. There's some debris. I can see footprints in here, in the silt. <laughs> so people do come in here. There's a lot of footprints. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing how the footprints stay in the dirt underneath the water. You think they would wash away, but because the water does flow out of this this mine, but so it's not stagnant water. There's some flowstone up there. Check out this flowstone right here. Right there. All that flowstone. And I can hear water. I hear water back here falling. Let's go check it out. It looks like the tunnel's starting to dry out right here. You can see the water flowing in. And of course you can see all the fencing for support on the ceiling. Okay. 
So here is a heavily timbered section. They only timbered in the weak areas of the tunnel. And uh, you can see the water flowing out right there to the entrance. Look at all these old ore cart rails they used for the uh, support in the overhead. Okay, here's a little bit of a collapse right here. Look at all this flowstone. That is covered in flowstone. Yeah. We'll continue this way. I just found out my battery's about to die, and I didn't bring any spares, so I've got to make this quick. Got some more timbering, some more timbering up here. So this is the next timbered area, and this looks a little deeper. Um, Yeah, uh, this is coming almost up to my knees. And then I think further up here there might be a collapse. I'm going to zoom in down there. It's very misty in here because of all the, the humidity. And uh, yeah, I can't tell if that's collapsed or not. Oh, it gets kind of deep again here. <laughs> and more chain link fencing. Yeah, here's the uh, big collapse that's about 400 feet in that I heard about. I heard you can get past this, but I don't think I'm going to do that today because my battery is in the red zone and uh, I uh, don't have any spares, unfortunately. Okay, now the water's pretty much up to my knees. But it looks like it's getting shallow here again. Yeah, that's the... Uh, that's as far as you can go. Thank you.